Well, it's very much about the friendship between Hannibal and Will Graham. Will is uh, a high profile at the FBI, but he has a hard time uh, embracing all the cases because he's got too much empathy. And that's where I come into the picture. I'm hired to, to help him out and to guide him through, through his job. And it's like a candy store, of course, for me. Well, I am playing Hannibal. And he's a psychiatrist when we meet him. And he's a lover of the fine arts, lover of food, literature, music, you name it. Everything that's not banal. I read the books because of this, but I saw all the films, and uh, yeah, it's, it's hard not to be a fan. I mean, what Anthony Hopkins is doing with the part is fantastic, so, uh, so we are trying with humble shoes to do our best. Well, that's always difficult. I mean, we, we, we can move ourselves totally away from, from, from the actual characters in the book, it's, it's in the films. Uh, and, and so, yes, as I said, he is a quite a, an elaborate man. He, he's, as I said, a lover of, of fine, fine arts and literature. Uh, we have to stick with that. Uh, but I guess it will be our own little story just because the, the fact that it's starting up before he's captured. So there are certain, certain parts he has to play that he didn't do in the other films. You can see the way I'm dressed and everything is very stylish. He's a, a man of taste, a uh, man of details. Nothing is left over just for a random thing. It's, it's, it's perfectionist. And when you're sitting dressed up like this in his dining room and you have all the little spices behind him, little growing trees, yeah, it gets, it gets, it gets you into the, the atmosphere of the scene right away. Well, I think it's very obvious that the people eating other people has been scaring people since the beginning of, of, of days, right? Um, we've got gruesome stories of, of people doing it out of need, or out of ritual, and then we also have people doing it for fun. <clears throat> it's something we can't understand, we can't comprehend it. And, uh, and the things we can't understand tends to trigger us and, f and make us very curious. Uh, and I, I guess that Hannibal is the icon of all cannibals. He has a certain uh, certain standard of morals. He uh, he wouldn't pick anyone. I mean, if if they are rude, they will definitely be on the list. He might make an exception once in a while out of need, but rude people would be on top of the list. That's for sure. As you said, we 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 always trying when we play the villains not to be straight up villains. We we want to have the um, something likable about them. Find it, and uh, sometimes it can be very hard. Uh, but we're doing our best, and it, that goes the other way as well. If you're playing the good guy, you have to find his mistakes, his little, his little faults, right? Uh, so we're trying to make him as human as he can, to, to a degree, but still Hannibal. I don't know whether it's just some specific thing about Hannibal character, but, but it's, I think it's always been intriguing and interesting for people, the dark places. The villain is always interesting. Uh, the guy who gets away with the stuff that we can only dream in our nightmares, is, it's appealing in a, in a very special way, and hopefully not too appealing. Well, Graham is uh, the high profile at the FBI. Uh, he's been away from his job for a while because he's been incapable of, of, of dealing with the cases, and they bring him back in, and he's still unable to, to have a normal life when he's dealing with cases. So. Jack Crawford, who is another FBI man, he gives me a visit and, and asks me if I will help him out, uh, helping this young man embrace his job. And that's where I'm being introduced. I, I think the, the cue to the whole relationship is a mind game thing. Uh, will is a very interesting character for, for Hannibal. He, Hannibal finds him very interesting, intriguing. He can mirror himself in him. Uh, a younger version, maybe, and, uh, and, and it gives him a fantastic opportunity to play, play around with, with this young man and maybe even get him on his side without him knowing it. So it, it's the key word throughout the series I get. I, there's a kind of a mind game going on constantly. Well, I think that this character, we cannot put him in a box like any other cases. He, he's very special. Uh, uh, if we call him a psychopath, he would not fit in there. If we call him something else, he wouldn't fit in there. He's, he's on a higher level, I would say. But as you can see in the background, I'm not sure you can see it, this is my office. So we are not holding back on anything. It's, uh, 
there is a taste, there is a flavor of some kind of David Lynch's universe. At the same time, there's a lot of humor in the script, and it's also very realistic and very in your face. So it's a funny mix of all that, uh, and and exactly what the style is, uh, I'm not sure I can answer that yet. But when you read it, uh, it's quite scary, but it's also quite funny. Uh, so, so that will be for now what I can say. And the cases will be new every time, and the cases will be. I don't know if it's just from Brian's head or if it's real cases, but they're very interesting. The two I've seen so far has been very interesting. When I read the scripts, I was like, oh, can we get away with this? Is this allowed? Uh, but, but I think there's a, lot, there's a lot of corners, not the round corners in, in American television. I think that, that it's, it's pretty radical what we're doing, and, and, uh, and, and you'll get to see that.